15% of couples worldwide will experience uh, infertility. Uh, and one out of three of those couples will have uh, the male partner be the sole cause of the infertility. Uh, and another one out of five of those couples will have both a component from the man and a component from the woman that's contributing to the infertility. So that means that one out of two couples that have difficulty conceiving is in part due to what we call a male factor. There are many different things that can contribute to a man having difficulty conceiving. Uh, they can be an underlying medical condition uh, that had been heretofore undiagnosed. Uh, it can be a hormonal problem. It can be something that's specifically abnormal about the man's sperm cells, um, and it can also be uh, an anatomic predisposition or, or a surgical problem, as we like to say, that can be contributing to him having problems conceiving with his partner. Oftentimes, there would be no outward um, uh, signs or symptoms that would indicate that a man is going to have problems conceiving. So really, we define infertility clinically. I mean, if you have been trying with your partner for a certain period of time and you have not had success, you know, that's really the only reliable sign. Uh, and then we would begin an evaluation. We would do uh, blood testing, which is usually hormonal testing, uh, things like testosterone, estrogen. Um, we would do uh, semen testing, and then uh, if indicated after the physical examination, we could also test for certain genetic conditions, which can be uh, checked just with a simple blood test. So about 50% of men have some treatable or correctable form of, uh, of male factor infertility. So there's a, there's a good percentage of men that can benefit from treatment. Uh, and so that's why every man should go through this evaluation to see if he falls into that 50% category where, where we can help him correct that issue. Hormonal problems, problems with testosterone, there are a lot of different hormonal treatments, most of which are just in the pill form, uh, which can correct that. Um, and um, any kind of uh, physical predisposition, uh, such as a condition called a varicocele, which is a dilated vein, which is in the scrotum, uh, which can contribute significantly to infertility. That's a, a fairly easily surgically correctable problem. Uh, and finally, if there are certain things about the man's semen analysis that require a certain specific therapy, uh, we can also institute that as well. So we know that you know, living a healthy lifestyle, um, it, eating right, being physically active, these can have measurable uh, uh, improvements in, in sperm parameters and in overall fertility potential. We know that cigarette smoking is, is counterproductive for a man's fertility potential. Um, Alcohol intake, at least in you know, low to moderate quantities, is, is probably not super harmful. It's a very common uh, question that men ask me. Um, so there are uh, some things, but many of the things that need to be intervened on are, are done in a medical setting. So my job as a urologist at Brigham Women's Hospital means that I have the opportunity to work uh, very closely with the reproductive endocrinologist at the Center for Infertility and Reproductive Surgery. And so, you know, if I'm the man, if, if, if I'm the physician for a man with regard to his infertility, you know, I work very closely with the, the female, uh, um, their physicians as well, reproductive endocrinologists. And that's great. And we share a lot of patients. We're always corresponding. Um, we have a lot of other research projects that we are trying to institute together. Uh, and so I think it's a great benefit to the patients at Brigham Women's Hospital that they have access to high quality care, both at the male and the female side. And it's, it can be essentially streamless uh, between the two.